1 and liftoff of Discovery, hoisting harmony to the heavens. Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at how NASA is preparing for crewed Artemis missions. It has been a long time since NASA launched humans on one of its own rockets. Even longer when comparing the last time we sent humans to the moon. However, before any of this happens, there is still a long list of tests and prep work necessary to ensure everything goes according to plan. As we watch the space launch system make progress, other valuable aspects are also being worked on. Recently, the agency not only provided an accurate timeline for some important upcoming launches related to Artemis, but also talked more about the preparation necessary prior to getting humans on the moon. This involved a lot of work and tests with humans on board. While SLS is very important, other key systems like Orion, Gateway, and the ground systems still have work to do. For example, teams have assembled most of the Space Launch System's core stage for Artemis II and moved the final piece of the stage in a position to complete the stage later this year. This is just one of many updates that show promising results for the future. Here I will go more in depth into the progress NASA is making and what to expect regarding launching humans a part of Artemis. At the time being, while teams continue to prepare for the next wet dress rehearsal attempt ahead of Artemis 1, engineers and technicians are making headway preparing for future Artemis missions with astronauts. The Orion spacecraft for Artemis 2, the first crewed Artemis mission, was powered on for the first time by technicians in the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where teams have been meticulously outfitting the crew module with its environmental control and life support systems and subsystems. Powering on Orion allows teams to begin verifying power and data can be routed to every aspect of the capsule. More specifically, this capsule will carry astronauts on a trip around the moon during the first crewed Artemis mission and help set the stage for future lunar landing missions through Artemis. With initial power on complete, the crew module will undergo a three-part test over several months which includes applying power to each of the eight power and data units that help provide communication between Orion's flight computers to its components. In addition, teams will begin installing the forward bay cover, which protect the top part of the crew module as the capsule blazes back through Earth's atmosphere at speeds of up to 25,000 miles per hour at the end of its mission. The Artemis II European Build Service module also is nearing integration with the crew module at Kennedy. Technicians recently conducted proof pressure and leak testing of propulsion and ECLS system connections between the module and the crew module adapter, and engineers are conducting thermal and electrical close-out activities for several systems. At NASA's Mitchett Assembly Facility in New Orleans, teams have assembled most of the Space Launch System's core stage for Artemis II and moved the final piece of the stage in position to complete the stage later this year. While there, the engine section team is completing installation of the main propulsion systems, finishing integration of the electrical and avionic systems, and preparing for functional testing of the various systems. During final integration, the team also will install the remaining internal thermal protection systems and prepare to position the engine section from vertical to horizontal so that it can be joined with the rest of the core stage. The engine section is located at the bottom of the core stage and includes the rocket's main propulsion systems that connect to the core stage's 4RS-25 engines that will help launch the Artemis II lunar mission. This fall, the engine section will be horizontally integrated with the previously joined forward assembly and liquid hydrogen tank to complete the core stage. NASA and Core Stage lead contractor Boeing are building core stages for the next three Artemis missions. The engines have been assembled and are ready for integration with the rest of the stage, while the 10 Artemis II solid rocket booster motor segments are stored and ready to be shipped to Kennedy, where the rest of the booster assembly is underway. The interim cryogenic propulsion stage has already been delivered to Florida and is finishing final processing. Teams also are preparing for Earth-bound aspects of future crewed missions. Canu Technologies Incorporated, which will provide three environmentally friendly vehicles, recently visited Kennedy to kick off site-related planning activities. NASA awarded the company a contract earlier this year to supply the vehicles that will be used on launch day for crewed missions to the moon in time for Artemis II. As Artemis II progress continues, preparations for Artemis III also are well underway. NASA's lead SLS booster contractor Northrop Grumman recently completed the 10 motor segments of the twin boosters for the mission, which will see astronauts land on the surface of the moon. The segments will be kept in storage at Northrop's Utah facility until needed at Kennedy for rocket stacking and assembly operations. At Mitchett, teams also are building core stages for Artemis III and Artemis IV. The Artemis III ICPS construction is well underway, and other rocket stage adapters for both Artemis II and Artemis III are in the final stages of production at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama. Proof testing to ensure the Artemis III Orion crew module pressure vessel is sealed tightly was successfully completed at Kennedy, and ESA and its contractor Airbus are preparing the Artemis III service module for shipment next summer to Kennedy from Bremen, Germany, where it is being manufactured. 
In terms of the current space launch system that is attempting the wet dress rehearsal, it was recently returned to the pad. Specifically, earlier this month, engineers and technicians at NASA's Kennedy Space Center conducted the final preparations for the rollout of the space launch system in Orion spacecraft. Over the past few weeks, teams successfully completed all major planned objectives identified during the previous wet dress rehearsal attempts, as well as some forward work previously planned for after the tanking test. The removal of the final set of platforms is complete, and the crawler transporter sits underneath the massive rocket, spacecraft, and mobile launcher. In terms of this progress, while inside the vehicle assembly building, teams completed several major objectives, including assessing the liquid hydrogen system leak at the tail service mast umbilical, replacing the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, ICPS, gaseous helium system, check valve and support hardware, and modifying the ICPS umbilical purge boots. The addition of hazardous gas detectors above the upper stage allows for additional visibility into any potential leaks during cryogenic operations. Engineers installed rain gutters on the crew access area to help prevent moisture from entering the crew module while the spacecraft and rocket are at the launch pad. Lastly, even the future Moon Space Station gateway is making progress. Recently NASA highlighted that the PPE engineering team is conducting an extensive electric propulsion system test campaign to better understand gateway's performance during various mission scenarios. The test allows engineers and mission planners to adjust the system to ensure it meets the requirements for exploration of the moon during Artemis missions. Solar electric propulsion is ideal for Gateway, because these systems harness the energy of the sun, convert it to power, and then use that power to produce long-duration, highly efficient thrust, providing mission flexibility and reduced costs. The PPE will use both a 6kW and a 12kW electric propulsion system. Each system contains various components that help the spacecraft thrust efficiently. Thrusters, power processing units, flow controllers that regulate the flow of gases, like xenon, used for propulsion, etc. Multiple companies, including prime contractor Mixer as well as Aerojet Rocketdyne and Busek Company, are supplying electric propulsion technologies for PPE. All of which will be interesting to keep track of as NASA continues to make progress toward launching humans to the moon. NASA has been working on Artemis for a long time now. As you can imagine, not only returning humans to the moon, but setting up a more permanent human presence is quite the task. This process involves many different projects and help from companies around the country. This being said, in recent months especially the agency is showing promising signs of progress. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.